Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how we can set up a Microsoft Excel and Adobe InDesign template to automatically update calendar pages for us. Now, today it's July 20th, which means that calendar season is going to be quickly approaching for us that work in the print and pre-press industry. And as you can see here from just a simple Google image search, there are literally thousands upon thousands of templates that customers might be choosing from to make their calendar templates. So I've always thought to myself, there's got to be an easy way to update all of those dates without having to go through and either change them one by one, or you know, if maybe if you had them set up with uh, uh, like lists or something like that, you know, there's just got to be a simple way to do it so that I can change it in any template that I've given and make it so that I can change it quickly year after year as well. So today I, I, I'm going to talk about how we can do that. I have a couple InDesign files that we're going to be using to create our template. And I also have this uh, yearly calendar um, Microsoft Excel file. I have this open here in uh, LibreOffice, but it's just a standard Microsoft Excel file. I've downloaded this from the actual Microsoft website. And it's a template that allows us to change the year. It's just a year at glance, basically. And when I change the calendar year from 2025 to 2026, it will automatically update all of these dates according to whatever uh, year that I put in up here. Now you can see here, if I click in any one of these cells, there's all sorts of different functions and everything. Um, I'm not an Excel expert. That's why I just went ahead and downloaded a template. Uh, but it not only will allow us to change the date, but we can go ahead and we can actually change the start day. So there's some people that would rather have uh, their week start on Monday instead of Sunday. So if I just change this from a 1 to a 2 and click here, you'll see all of these uh, dates change. But the uh, day of the week changes as well. So now we have Monday as our start date. Um, but I'm going to go back to number 1 here. This is kind of the normal um, way that we display calendars here, at least in the United States. Uh, you can also change the month as well. So if you had a, uh, if you wanted a calendar to start maybe halfway through the year for whatever reason, you could do that. Uh, but for this video, we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to keep this on uh, month one. So anyway, that's our template here in Microsoft Excel. Very easy to change. And I'm going to change this back to 2025 here. Um, and this would be great if every single template that we ever wanted to utilize for a year at glance all looked exactly the same. I can just go ahead and I can just export this, drop it into my InDesign uh, template, and we're good to go, basically. But in the real world, obviously, that's not the case. Everybody wants to use their own fonts. They want to use their own colors. They want to style it a little bit differently from one another. So we're going to use this as a base for building out our InDesign template. So in InDesign here, I have these two InDesign files open. And this is what our template is going to look like when it's all finished. Let me just hit the W key here. And you can see I have a date up at the top. I have an area for a background photo. I have layers that have all of the, dif the different items here. So I have, this is the calendar area. There is a little area down here at the bottom that we can use for putting a um, you know copyright or something. We could put a logo up here. Lots of different options, but this is basically our uh, template here that we can use. I also have uh, swatches set up as spot colors for all of the different elements here. So let's say if I want to change the background color of the month to maybe like a like an orange color or something like that, I can go ahead and click that, and I can change the uh, sliders here to change it to different colors. Maybe I want it red. Um, same thing for all of the different things here: the table border color, um, these. Uh, days of the week, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I also have paragraph styles set up for all of these as well. So if I want to go ahead and I want to change the font or the font size, I could do that as well. I have table uh, styles set up for these tables down here for the dates, and then one up here for the actual year. And then same goes here for the cell styles: one for the year, one for the calendars down below here, and then the days of the week as well. I'm not going to go into how to create all the styles. There's other videos that, that do a better job. Um, but uh, that information is already set up for us. 
So now let me show you how I'm going to build this template out from the beginning. So you can either do it yourself or if you want, I'll put this on Patreon. You can purchase this uh, if you just want to skip ahead and just download this file and customize it however you want. There are uh, There is one thing that we need to do before we get started though. And we need to go up to, into InDesign's preferences and come down here to file handling. And right here under the links area where it says create links when placing text and spreadsheet files, we need to make sure that that is checked. If that checkbox is not checked for whatever reason, whatever I say from this point forward is not going to work for you. So you uh, need to make sure this is the most critical part of the whole uh, process to check that checkbox and hit OK. Now when we go ahead and we link our Microsoft Excel file, everything will be able to be auto-updated when it comes time to it. So I have a text box here that is uh, just like a placeholder. I'm going to go up to File, I'm going to go to Place, and I'm going to navigate to that calendar file that we have for our Excel file. And I want to make sure that my Show Import Options uh, is checked here because we are going to need to input uh, some information here. Uh, first, we are going to set this to a unformatted table and we're gonna make sure to use our calendar table style or whatever table style you want to use for uh, your template. And then up here where it says cell range, we need to select just the areas that we uh, have set up for uh, January. This is going to include the day of the week um, all the way down to this last row here and even though this last row is blank um, that's because January only requires five uh, rows here uh, by the time we get to March we're gonna need six rows so you want to make sure to incorporate that sixth row because eventually one year January will require six rows so uh, with all of that selected you're gonna take a look right here where the cell range is and in this case it's C9 to I15 this is going to look a little bit different in Microsoft Excel, but essentially this is what you're looking for is the cell range. And so you're going to go back to Adobe InDesign and you're going to put in C9 colon I15. And everything else can stay the same. You don't need to touch anything else. And when you do that, you're just going to hit OK. And what it's going to do now is it's going to place in all of those, all, all the information from that Microsoft Excel file for those particular cells. Now there is some formatting issues right away you can see. Uh, so if I click in here, I use my uh, uh, text tool, I'm going to change the uh, uh, alignment to uh, left and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shift and move these over so that all of these are even and there's a little bit of unevenness in the column so I'll fix that, highlight it, I'll right click and then the last thing I'm going to do since I have my day of the week change or uh, highlighted already is I'm going to change that to my day of week cell style. And so now I have my formatting all exactly the same way that I have here in my finished file. And now I need to do the same thing for the rest of the months. So I'm just going to uh, copy this and you don't have to change anything. Just copy it over and then go back to file place and select our Microsoft Excel file again and then we're going to uh, select the second set of uh, cells here for February and this is K9 to Q15 so I'll put in here K9 to Q15 and I'll click OK and again we have to do a little bit of formatting now again this is going to uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of work here in the beginning to format all of these cells for each one of these. But just remember that once we do this once, it may take a few minutes, but from this point forward, you're never going to have to make any changes to this again because we will be able to auto update. And I'll show you that um, in a few minutes here. So that's the information for January. For February, we're going to go ahead and rinse and repeat and do that for March, April, May, all the way till we get to December. And again, every time you uh, copy and paste then when you go to file place you need to make sure to grab the cell range for that particular month so March here is going to be S9 to Y15 and we'll do that all the way until we get to December 
So the interest of saving time, I'm gonna go ahead and just skip to our final file here, which I've done that for all of the dates here. Um, so if you wanna double check real quick, I'm gonna open up my um, uh, calendar app here on, uh, uh, on my Mac OS, and you can see here 2025, January starts on Wednesday the 1st and ends on Friday the 31st, so 1-31. 128, 128, so everything seems to be matching up. Uh, you can check random dates, but I know for a fact that this works. So everything is current the way exactly we want it. Uh, obviously, like I said, since you have all these paragraph styles and everything, you can change fonts, colors, whatever you need to do with it. But ultimately, from here, we can export to a PDF and send it off to be printed, and we're all set. But that was for 2025, and now we need to go ahead and we need to roll this into 2026. Now the advantage obviously is instead of going in here and changing all of these dates manually, since we have everything linked here in our links panel, we're gonna go back to our Microsoft Excel file here and I'm gonna change the year to 2026. And I'll just go ahead and hit save. And I'll come back to Adobe InDesign. You can see here we have the warning here in our links panel that all of these have been updated. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to need to update all instances. When I write or uh, when I click on that, it may give you a warning just saying like, hey, uh, are you sure you want to do this? Because you may have formatting issues or something. You can just hit yes. And now we have 2026 and we have um, uh, all the way from January to February or December has been set up and automatically updated. Uh, I forgot to show you here this this last uh, little area, I had also done a um, place here, and I've set this up so that it's pulling automatically from this uh, range, which is E2 to G2. So if I go E2 to G2, I click OK, and there was, again, there was a little bit of formatting that I had to do there. I'll just undo that so it's already set up for me. Um, but I set it up here so that even the, the uh, year will automatically update as well. Now you can manually enter that in if you want to, but um, the way I set it up, it'll automatically update as well. So anyway, now 2026 is in here. And again, if I come into my calendar app and I change this to 2026, just to confirm that everything is true and correct, here's January from Thursday the 1st to Saturday the 31st. And you can see uh, Thursday to Saturday, 1 to 31. 1 to 28, 1 to 28, so everything lines up. If uh, I want to change this to another year, like um, let me come in here and go 2028, and you can see this is a leap year. We have February 29th. I'll hit save, come back to InDesign, click my update, and now you can see in February we have 29 days as well. So now everything is automatically updating. The other great thing is if you have some customers that want to have their uh, day of the week start on a Monday. Instead, what we can simply do here is just come in here and change this from a one to a two. And then we can, again, save this. We'll come back to InDesign. We will refresh this. And you can see now our dates start from Monday instead of Sunday. So all of these were automatically updated as well. And that's the whole reason why I chose this set of cells instead of just the set, set of cells below it, including this will automatically update this information as well. If we change this from a one to a two in our Microsoft Excel file, changing the date range. And again, here, I just updated, so I'll come back and everything changes back to Sunday through Saturday. And again, if you wanted to change something here to start on a different month instead, maybe, uh, you have a customer that does only calendars, you know, from half the year or something like that, you could change that as well. But I think it's best to just leave this on the first month. And that way, if you have different um, templates in InDesign, let's say you have a traditional calendar style where you have a photo at the top and then the calendar pages below on the bottom. Um, if you link them just in the same way we did before where you highlight the whole uh, table or in this case, just a, a you know a, a text text block, and go to file place and set it up that way for January through December. 
that will automatically change as well. Again, you have to do a little bit of formatting when it's all uh, set up in the beginning. But from that point forward, the next year, all you have to do is just basically do one click and then you're done. And you can change, since we set up uh, uh, swatches and uh, paragraph styles and table styles and everything, if you want to customize that for individual customers, then that's easy enough to do. I also, like I said, had set up everything with layers, so those are easy to change as well. You can hide and add new layers if you want to change some of the formatting as well. So it makes it very easy to update not only the template that you're working on, but may, you know, let's say up to 100 different calendar templates. If you set it up that way and link everything, all you need is to have one Excel file that sits somewhere on your computer that all of these other InDesign files uh, link to. And when you make one change there, it'll automatically update in all of the different InDesign templates that you have for calendars. So I hope that helps somebody. If you have any questions, please leave those down in the comments section below. Um, again, if you would like to purchase this, please check out my Patreon page. I'll leave a link down in the description below. For those of you who are paid Patreon supporters, you will get access to this for free by default, like all my other digital files that I have there. So if you're looking to support me a little bit more monetarily, check out that Patreon page or just leave a, a thanks down below. There's a little thanks icon um, uh, down next to the like, which by this point in the video, I hope you already clicked. If not, please do so. If you haven't subscribed, please check it out. I have tons of other videos that are pre-press related, um, tons of different things that are print related, and I'll keep adding content as much as uh, people want. Thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate watching the whole video. If you have any questions, again, leave them down in the comment section below. And until next time, take it easy.